right guys, I'm just gonna put this out here before you watch this video. This is not up to the level that I would normally put out in video. Not that I make amazing videos or anything, but this is something. This is substantially subpar. So I appreciate anybody that watches this. Hope you find it helpful in some way if you're trying to manual swap your E36. We were rushed, failed to use our equipment properly, and then we just failed to record in general. So no excuses. So I will probably the next time I make a manual swap with E36, I'm gonna redo this video. So and enjoy it for the time being. Yeah. I hope some of you are, are longtime subscribers find this entertaining and you can laugh at our uh, idiocracy because it's fucking horrible. <laughs> All right guys, uh, back with part two of manual swapping your E36. So we're starting off this video with all of the parts that you will need to collect before you install anything. We'll start with the easy parts. You need a transmission. For this swap, I'm using uh, the ZF. So either a ZF310 or a ZF320. They're pretty much the same trans, just the fluid that they took, BMW changed the part number. They came in E36 M3s, they came in E36 328s, they came in Z3 M Roadsters, they came in E39 528s, they came in E46 328s and uh, 330s. ZFs came in quite a lot of cars. So if you're running the ZF swap, you also need to make sure that you get a ZF drive shaft. So these only came in M3s from 96 to 99, and 328s from 96 to 99, but only E36s. So a 99, 328, four door would be an E46, not the same drive shaft. And then if you're using a Getrek trans, make sure you get the, anyway, this is just for ZF swapping. Then you need an E36 clutch kit. As long as you have the flywheel, the pressure plate, and the disc, and they all work together, it doesn't matter what E36 they're from, they will work. The only issues you run into is some of the flywheels have a different dowel set up, so not all pressure plates will work to mount. But you can use a setup out of an E46, um, an E34, it doesn't really matter as long as you have all of it. That's where you start mixing and matching you get the issue. You're gonna need a throw-up bearing. You're going to need a pilot bearing if you're manual swapping because there isn't one in there. Uh, a lot of kits will come with two. The bigger hold one is the ZF, the smaller is for a Getreg. You're gonna need bolts for your flywheel install. Um, if you're using a single mass flywheel, like this one is, you can reuse the auto bolts. If you are using a dual mass, you need the longer bolts that are specific to the dual mass. Uh, they're quite expensive from BMW, so don't lose them if you already have them. You're going to need an E36 manual cross member. They are the same from a ZF to a Getrek. You just need an E36 manual. Um, don't quote me if the four cylinder is the same, but I would think it probably is the same as well. New mounts for it, they're the same mounts as the auto. You're gonna need a shifter. Get the shifter for an E36 ZF. So you can get it out of a 328 or an M3. It's good while you're there, uh, Jameson did. Replace the cup in the shifter, replace the bushing on the front and the rear. Uh, this one is all new and solid and actually feels great. You're gonna need a selector rod for a ZF. I don't know the technical term for this. We just call them buttholes, but they clip into the body of the car if you buy a poly one of these, a lot of the times you will just get this piece. This piece is meant to be installed in one of these that has the factory rubber. Um, I don't recommend buying these. Greg from Boost Monkey sells these complete. You can just buy the, the whole thing and it just snaps right into the car. No modification necessary. If you're gonna need Clutch lines. I would re recommend getting everything new. So you can use the hard lines. Uh, if, if you're the one pulling your pedals, you can find all the stuff. The hard lines really don't go bad, but especially the soft lines. Jameson decided to run a stainless braided line there to get rid of the rubber. Great idea. With the uh, 
the hard lines. There are two different styles. The 96 to 99 is this style. And it just clips in and has a pin that holds it so you don't have to sit there and turn the 11, which is a pain to get to in these cars. If you're buying all new stuff, there's no reason not to buy this versus the earlier stuff. Just make sure you get a master that matches this because the master is also your specific to go to this or it's threaded at the end. If it's not with your pedals, you'll need a supply line that goes from the brake reservoir to your master cylinder. You will need a manual pedal assembly. Looks something like this. So uh, I said in the last video that the pin was different. Apparently the pin is the same, so you can't just slide a clutch pedal over that. But if you look at these two brake pedals together, you see how much smaller that pedal is, plus the angle as it comes down pulls it away from the clutch pedal so you don't end up hitting both at the same time. You're gonna want a slave cylinder. Uh, I recommend getting a brand, oh this is, you're gonna want a master cylinder. I recommend getting a brand new one. You can use the one that's on there, but it's a pain to install this stuff and you probably just wanna do it once and then you're gonna be good for a really long time. You're gonna want a new slave. The ZF and the Getrag ones are the same. The biggest thing, these later style slaves have this collar right here that goes inside of the trans. The earlier like E30 ones are just flat there, cannot be used. Chip boot, or I mean chip knob. If you wanna run a fancy one of those, if you want a stock one. Chip boot, if you want one of those. Uh, the rubber isolator sealant that goes on the bottom of this to seal out all the exhaust gases and heat from the bottom of the car. Very useful, I think. If you have a 328 and you're switching, you're gonna need a Guibo with your drive shaft because the, uh, the auto is a much smaller one than the manual. I think that's all you need for a manual swap. So, let's get to it. So, when I do a manual swap, I like to do everything um, before I put the transmission on. So I put the transmission and then the drive shaft on last. So we're gonna go ahead and get all the shifter stuff mounted up there. We're gonna get obviously our clutch assembly on. And then we're gonna run all of our hydraulic lines down here as well. Get our pedals installed inside. So the trans is the very last thing that we're gonna put on. First thing I'm gonna wear, because it's easy, so I'm just gonna do it, is uh, go ahead and get all of the shifter stuff right there. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, snap in the butthole. And uh, I always forget which way this goes, but I'm guessing by this nice round part that that goes forward. And the back end is chopped to fit the body. So it definitely goes that way. And this is just a press fit. There's these little slots here and here, and there's teeth on the car that just grab those. So I always like to just put one side in and then just kind of push the other side up and it snaps into place. Go ahead and assemble our shifter. It's easier to put this on and put it up from the bottom. I've always found than put it in from the top. So just make sure you stick it through the bushing that you did and then just slide that up there. And then once you're there, um, you can pull that the rest of the way up from the inside. Shifter part done. Go ahead and install the clutch. Um, if you happen to pull off your dust shield that goes right here and you want to put that back on, make sure you put it on before you put the clutch on. I'm not a big fan of running them, especially just on cars that really aren't driven in the street and in the rain. So I'm not going to put one in. On your flywheel, there is one bolt that is bigger one bolt that is bigger than the other ones. And there's a dowel for it. Just make sure you line those up. Some of these are weighted and balanced. Some of them aren't. Some of them have a pickup on the actual teeth um, and the crank sensors on the bell housing. Some E36s don't have that, but that's why that's there. So you just line that up and just kind of walk it on the best you can. When they're new, they kind of will fight you a little bit. I'm just going to grab a bolt and stick it in it for now so it doesn't fall. Cool. Also, good practice here is to uh, 
Loctite, all these bolts, when you put them in, I will be doing that. I have not Loctited them in the past. I haven't had any bad things happen. So do it how you want, but it is smart. And even if nothing unsafe happens because it falls off, you still gotta pull your trans and fix it. And I'm sure when it fell off, it broke some shit. So shout out to Greg from Boost Monkey for hooking it up with the high strength thread locker. He also hooked it up with that that bushing so you can find those on his website so when i do loctite i just do one beefy stripe on all of them some people might say don't use red on a bolt you want to take out i don't know i've never had an issue taking out bolts that were red i'm also sure that there's a torque spec for this I've never once torqued a flywheel. I don't know how you accurately lock it from spinning, but you can get an accurate measure. I don't know if you have somebody try and hold the front with a breaker bar. To me, it always seems like it's gonna be slightly inaccurate. So I would much rather just run it in with a medium uh, strength impact. And again, never had any issues especially if you have the Loctite on. Let's get that first one out that we put in that we didn't put Loctite on. So, I'm gonna say that is, I like to use like a 3 8 impact, something that's like overly strong. And then you're good. And then when you want to take it off, you grab a bigger impact, it blasts through the uh, thread locker, and you're off. All right, let's install a clutch disc. So, if you are running a single mass flywheel, it almost always will have a sprung clutch because now you don't have the dual mass you know, you have to have something that absorbs it. So, read it. Uh, it might say flywheel side and or transmission side, or if it's German, like you got a Luke one, it's something like Gerber or something. That's transmission in German. Um, that is the transmission side, such flywheel side. If it's not labeled though, this part that sticks out will almost always go into this void that a single mass flywheel has. So if it's not labeled, try it that way first. Because when you run this out, all of this stuff right here will hit on the inside of your pressure plate and you'll never be able to disengage your clutch. So, oh, we messed up. Forgot a very important part. Oh, <laughs> pilot bearing. I think we can still squeeze it in from here, but pilot bearing goes into the crank right there. How I like to do it, is find a socket that hits the outer race perfectly, but still fits in inside the crank, because you gotta get this more than flush. So I'll just kinda knock them in and get them started. And then start going through sockets and find one that's the right size, and I don't know how I just grabbed the perfect one, but this is a Craftsman 22. It seems to be about perfect. I usually don't use the front end because there's a bigger surface on the back. And then just pound them in. And you'll feel them stop. Go till they stop. If you leave them too far out, this, this part right here will be hitting it and it just makes horrible squealing noises if they're not all the way in. So definitely an important thing. Is there fluid in there? Yeah. Definitely important thing to do. If your clutch kit did not come with a clutch alignment tool uh, or the right one, uh, auto parts stores usually rent like a universal one that can like expand and do certain things that works. You can take like a Sharpie and wrap a ton of electrical tape around it. The only use for the clutch alignment tool is to help you get the transmission on. It doesn't do anything with the way the car drives or anything like that. It's only so that you can spline the transmission. So as long as you get it close enough that you can get the transmission on, 
never have to worry about it again. All right, we found them. They're H6 bolts. Uh, I think that's an M10 by 1.0 or 1.5 probably. But that's something you can get from BMW if you need it or any auto parts store probably. So big thing is find your dowels. And then just barely get those started. And with most clutch alignment tools, this being one, uh, they don't line up perfectly. So you still kind of want to look at it and get it as close to the center as you can as you're doing it. If you've ever had issues putting your transmission on where it just like won't go and then you have to like pull it on with bolts, which is never a good idea, but it's something you can definitely do. It's all just how well you got it aligned, the, the clutch aligned. Some people thread locker on these. I don't like that because these strip very easily. So I want these to come off. as easy as possible. Um, also, these have a torque spec. It's something very light, like 18 foot-pounds. Um, again, you just use a small impact. Just go till it stops. Don't sit there and ugga dugga it forever. If you do manage to break one of these off, you know, just hit it with a grinder, pull it off, put a new one in, it'll just thread out by hand. But again, we do a lot of just get it done here and uh, never had any issue with it. Just kind of eyeball it, see how you're looking. I mean, it's tight now. And then once you're in, you want this to come in and out fairly easily. There's a little resistance there, but not bad. The trans should go right in. Um, so our next part is, uh, uh, I'm gonna get the pedals installed and get those clutch things ran. So what I didn't cover in the disassembly video was punching the two holes that we'll need to punch through the firewall for automatic cars to become manual cars. So we're gonna get the car lowered down and uh, find those two spots. For the reservoir one, I think it's easier to see it from the top. So I'll go ahead, get as much of this junk out of the way as I can. Um, so the supply line it's poke through spot is just, you know, probably between two and three o'clock behind the brake booster. And then the clutch, the hydraulic end where the master exits is probably around five o'clock on the master cylinder. You could probably remove the entire fuse box to see it from this side. But it'd probably be a lot easier just to get in, crawl into the dash, grab a light, and just find it. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, so right in here, right above where the carpet is, this is where the master goes out, right there. And then right above it is where the supply line goes. Those are your two holes. They just have these little, like, plastic, you know, felted, I don't know, insulation block-offs. Just poke through that, and then it'll poke through another grommet on the firewall itself, and you're in. So this video coming up, kind of takes a downhill turn. We forgot to turn on the microphone when recording. So if you guys have any questions and it's not pretty straightforward following, go ahead and message us on Denver Beer and Oil on Instagram and we'll get back to you guys as soon as possible. Okay, now that we got the blanking hole sorted out, we're gonna go ahead and finish assembling the pedal bracket. So we've got our new master for the clutch and it attaches to that pin over there on the side. Uh, there's kind of that clevis hole and that pushes down on it. You want to again make sure that your outlet is the same as the hard line and you should be good to go. Alrighty, now that we're underneath the car, uh, we're going to take the task of fishing that hard line that goes to the master cylinder through the firewall. Um, once again, the lower hole on the firewall inside the car when you look at it is the hard line for the master. Um, it's kind of a pain to fish this 
line through into the firewall. It's okay to bend the line. Just make sure you don't kink it or bend it completely and you should be okay. Okay, so now we're over to the clutch pedals. Um, Chris is pointing out the clutch safety switch here. I'm not entirely sure on what you have to do to make that work. So that might have to be something you should research on your own, but it's not necessary to make the car work, especially if you're running the automatic ECU, which you can run as well. You don't even have to pull the uh, automatic transmission computer either. So it's on to putting in the pedals, and the big thing there is it's the reverse of installation. Okay, so here Chris is just going through the firewall, kind of making room through that blanking hole and then fishing in through the clutch line, which is that supply line that he showed in the first clip. In order to tap into the automatic reservoir, there's a little plastic nipple there and you just want to cut slightly in front of the barb, you know, a little bit more than slightly but just enough so that way the fluid can flow through and that barb is still effective on the hose. You can see him making the cut there. Uh, if you have fluid in there, it's kind of a mad dash to get that line on before it leaks everywhere. It could be good practice to go ahead and, you know, drain the reservoir, but you don't have to. And we've never ran a hose clamp on that. I don't think it's practice to run a hose clamp on that. So once you have the uh, supply line on, you're good to go. It can prove to be quite difficult to get that line on, so there's nothing taboo about using pliers just to help assist you on the way. Now that we're done with the engine bay side, we're over into the interior, and Chris is hooking up the supply line to the barb on the master cylinder. The, about the same process as it was to the reservoir, not too crazy. Getting the pedals in, however, is a pain and takes a lot of time. It can help to remove your seat, we didn't do that in this case, but it gives you a little bit more room and you can lay upside down in there too. Okay, now that we have all of our lines routed and the master and slave cylinders are hooked up, it's time to hulk this transmission on. Uh, it's not really recommended you do it as Chris is in the video. Probably best to use a trans jack or if you're on the ground, get really good at bench pressing. He's using a pole jack at the front of the engine to tilt it backwards so it lines up a little bit easier. But the big thing is you want to make sure the transmission is almost completely level with the engine so that way the input shaft can spline all the way through no problem. We found it helpful to keep the transmission in gear and then rotate it on the output section of the transmission so we can get a better spline. Um, in this case and in filming this video it, the transmission fought us about the whole time and Chris didn't get done filming until about 10.30. I think he mentions that in the end clip where there is audio, but it's, it's a struggle to get these things on and sometimes it's the easiest thing in the world. So there's a lot of off on, off on, make sure you're good. Um, but as long as you know you have the alignment tool working for you and uh, everything lined up, eventually you'll get there. A quick pro tip as well when you're getting these things on is, uh, good idea once you've gotten the transmission somewhat splined onward and when I say splined too the transmission will go essentially flush to the engine and then you'll just have to bolt it up if that's not the case then you run the bolts through it and kind of pull it in um, if you do spline it and get it on and it's on a lift you can run in one or two bolts uh, on the bottom just to hold it up there while you get yourself situated there's no issue all right guys um it's a bummer. It's the next day. I'm standing where the car was. So, uh, yeah, kind of ended abruptly there. So where we were was throwing the trans in. Um, I didn't really go super over the pedals as well. So let me go over that on the install there. We ran the clutch line from the bottom up. So he was uh, at a helper under the car um, pushing through. And then I stuck my finger through the firewall and held it and pulled it through. That was the move. I definitely recommend if you're doing this swap, make sure to get a master cylinder and a clutch line from a 96 and up E36. Don't get the older one that you have to thread in the hard line to the master because that's just gonna be miserable. And also I pointed out that, that the, the Dura last one was kind of too long and it was the wrong one. So yeah, maybe just go with OEM BMW. The other thing that I got once I was in there, the uh, the clip to hold 
I don't know if it's quite a clevis pin, but the pin that holds the brake booster to the brake pedal, I can kind of show with this one. It goes right through this slot here. It was much easier to, uh, um, if the brake switch was missing, because it kind of goes like that right there. If this brake switch wasn't installed prior, that pin would be much easier to install. There is this recess portion right there though, that you drop the pin into and then push it back through um, that uh, does make it definitely bearable. There's a spring that goes in there. I, I installed that spring. I've, I've driven cars with that spring not installed and it was okay. So yeah, I think that was it for the pedals. Just bolted them up, made sure everything worked. There was no real issue with that. It's, it's a pain being on your back in there, but you can do it. So then we got to actually putting the trans on. The trans just fought and fought. Uh, it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't go on. I took it off uh, three times to realign it, realign the clutch with the alignment tool. It never got to a point where it was happy. So eventually we just ended up sucking it in with the bolts and that worked. Yeah, that was weird. I, I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've never had that actually happen before where I couldn't just realign it and slam it on. Excuse me. So, so then we were at that point. Transmission in, nothing done on the inside, nothing done behind the trans. So I have some more ZFs sitting on the ground over here so we can walk over. We'd be looking from the car down from here. So we'd already installed the shifter and everything back here and it's sticking through. So this is the point where this, the carrier goes in and it's what we call the bitch clip goes through. It goes through from the driver's side through and then folds forward onto this and that's where it clips on. And then you have your selector rod. So this is a selector rod. Your selector rod. Thanks, Will. Um, this is a cut one from another car. Somebody modified a Getrag one to work for a ZF. And um, so you have these yellow bushings um, make sure to use those. They're important and you have these clips. So these just slide into the transmission. Uh, every one I've ever done has slid through from uh, the passenger side of the trans towards the driver's side. So the clip being on the driver's side, um, obviously the same way on the shifter. Make sure you get your shifter going the right direction. They, uh, they tilt towards the back of the car. Um, if you have them tilting the other way, uh, it, like first, third, and fifth and reverse are hard to get to because they're so far forward. And then second and fourth kind of feel like where neutral should be. So if you have that, just spin your shifter around and push it through the other way. Slave install, um, that's just the, there's just 213 oval nuts. Try to use oval nuts so they don't back out. I, at this point, like to bleed the hydraulics. We kind of screwed up on that one. I think I mentioned it earlier that I cut that nipple on the reservoir too soon, so we just were draining through. But that did allow a long time for fluid to work its way down to the slave. What I like to do for slaves, open it up, let it bleed just a little bit right there, open the bleeder screw till I get like a good stream of fluid coming out. Close that, get in the car, make sure the pedal isn't depressed against the floorboard, pull the clutch pedal out. But I just push the end of the slave until it gets harder and harder to push. And then I push that like into the frame rail to pump it that way. Then you actually don't need anybody to help you bleed it. You can bleed it yourself. You can have somebody watch from up top and just make sure that when the when the bubbles stop. I don't know if you're getting, this is a horrible angle there. Maybe that's better. I was pointing you right into the sun. It might work a little bit better to have them so that when they can say, when bubbles stop going up, you're pretty bled. You can get in the car, push the pedal, see how it feels. From then on, we installed the drive shaft. And when you go ahead and install a drive shaft, just make sure you attach it to the diff, then attach it to the transmission, and then tighten the two nuts for the center support bearing last. And some people will say to preload it. I don't like to preload, I just like to do that first, and I've never had any issue with them failing doing that. So either way, make sure it's in there straight and it's not cockeyed, like that the space behind your nut and in front of your nut and that little track is the same so that it's not twisted in there. Into the car. You have a connector that plugs into your automatic shift carrier. It's a black plug, plugs into that. Um, what you need to start the car to connect 
is pin five and seven there. I believe it was a brown and then a, a brown black. Um, connecting those two makes the car think it's in park. So then it'll start. You can also take the time to wire it to a, a clutch safety switch. I neglected to do that. BMWs before 96 uh, didn't have a clutch safety switch. And I personally like being able to start the car without sitting in it and pushing the clutch all the way down. Just remember to, you know, make sure it's in neutral before you turn the key. Good practice anyway, even if your car has a safety switch because maybe it'll fail and your car will take off and drive down the hill and hit some child or something. But that was it for that. We uh, ended up taking the plug that went after this. I think this is some sort of speed sensor for the transmission um, and tried to use that as the reverse plug on the ZF. It would be like right around here. Uh, obviously that didn't work, but it was worth a shot. If you want to have reverse lights, it's a fairly good idea. Um, if I remember correctly, it's these two pins right here. I don't remember those numbers, um, but you would hook a jumper from there to uh, straight to the side of the transmission. Um, just find a plug. You can cut that plug off of your auto trans harness that went here and just extend it, run it up through the bottom of the car and then into that plug. Just You can cut those wires and splice them. You can make a jumper to connect into there. Kind of whatever you feel works for you. Um, but that was it. Let me put the interior back together. That car was an, obviously an auto 328, so it had a 391 diff in it. Um, that is really aggressive for street driving. Uh, a manual 328 would come with like a 307 or maybe a 315. I can't remember which between 325s and 328s. If you're taking your car drifting, which is what he was doing, then the 391 is the preferred diff for drifting in an E36. So that worked out well for him, that it was just ready to go. Uh, if you have any questions or want to see more in-depth thing, I can show you much more. I'm sorry the video kind of ended like that. It was just, uh, I had planned on the car being here for a couple days and I didn't realize he was going to work with me and he drove it here and he wanted to drive it home that night. So um, when it got to the end and the trans was fighting us a little bit, kind of ran out of time, just had to get it done so he could get home. So if anything, um, hit me up on Instagram, DBO Chris, or just the Denver Beer Oil account. I, I, I see both of those. And uh, I'll answer any questions with pictures on manual swapping your E36. If you're, if you're worried about it, um, don't be. It's, it's not a hard process at all. And it makes your car so much better to drive, worth a ton more money. And yeah, go ahead and do it. So thanks for watching this video. If, you, uh, if you'd like to see any more DIYs covered uh, in the near future, we're done with events for a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's knocking out little projects, cleaning this place up and uh, making some money. So as always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you would like to subscribe, please do. We definitely appreciate it. And see you in the next one.